Hey guys, it's Alexander Williamson here with The Secret History Living in Your Aquarium. Today we're going to talk about something in this video that I've come across many times in comments and questions. And so I figured I'd just make a quick video about it because it's a very common problem and it has a little bit of a nuanced answer, but I want to give it to you guys in full. So basically the question goes like this. Hey Alex, I just set up a new aquarium. I just put in java ferns, anubias, uh, crypts, all sorts of plants. It's almost covered. Yet still, my ammonia or my nitrates or nitrites keep spiking. So what's going on? Uh, why is it happening? Usually they tend to have a gravel or sand substrate and uh, we're gonna go inside, take a look at a couple of my tanks and talk about what exactly is going on when you have a planted tank but it just seems like it won't stabilize like it just won't become uh, safe in ammonia and cycle or it's cycled but the nitrates are just really high and to the point where it's not healthy for the fish and you have to do water changes you know multiple times a week or whatnot so let's go inside look at a couple tanks and talk about what in the heck is going on? All right, guys, so here is the quintessential type of tank that people are usually talking about. Now, this tank has gravel and a little bit of aqua soil, uh, a little bit of Amazonia, uh, ADA uh, aqua soil, as well as a little bit of fluval stratum, which just gives the plants a little more nutrients. But for the most part, it's a gravel bottom tank it's got a smallish sponge filter that's air powered and right now going pretty slow and it's got plants now the thing that I get asked all the time is Alex I have a tank you know 10 gallons 20 gallons whatever it may be and I put plants in it I've got you know I've got uh, Java fern I've got bulbitis like this I've got uh, crypt cryptocurrins I've got all sorts of plants in there, but my tank is not balanced. I keep getting elevated levels of uh, nitrates. And assuming that the tank has been fully cycled, so that means that you've got uh, a filter, like that sponge filter, or like a hang on the back filter, canister filter, box filter, doesn't really matter what kind of filter you're talking about, but you've got a filter that has spent a couple weeks cycling, and that means that it has two different colonies of bacteria uh, of nitrobactacillus, which are able to take your ammonia, which is created by the fish poo and waste, and as well as the plant debris and the food that you feed that doesn't get eaten. So oftentimes people will have a whole bunch of snails and that can be an indicator that maybe you're feeding too much food and that alone can be a problem. But if that's not your problem and you notice that like this tank, you know, you got a few snails but it's nothing crazy and uh, your, your tank just doesn't seem to be able to have its filter keep up with the, the nitrates um, being reduced by the bacteria there, uh, or rather the ammonia and the nitrites being turned into nitrates and then your plants eating that, you have several options. Something's got to give and what's going on at the most basic level is you either have fish that are creating too much waste. So if you'll notice in this tank, it's fine, the, the nitrates are always zero in this tank, but it's because I have a few dozen fish in a 10 gallon, but they're extremely teeny little micro rasbora species. They produce very little waste. They eat a lot of the little microflora and fauna that grows on the algae and uh, bacteria and biofilm colonies that exist on the hardscape in the tank. So you can see um, on every surface in this tank, it's, it's over five years old, there are just tons of little life forms and the fish are able to pick away and eat at that and that develops over time but say I'm going in and I'm feeding with a flake food or a pellet food 
uh, they'll eat that and if I don't overfeed it it's not going to build up too high in the substrate now one thing people do oftentimes and I have an entire video on it that you can check out about gravel vacuuming is if they have just a gravel tank they've got a shallow gravel bed of maybe an inch or two or maybe sand or fluorite uh, or some sort of colorful substrate that you would get at a pet store um, maybe even glass beads but it is not a natural substrate in the sense that it's not a soil uh, that's created you know with clay and silt and earth and different organic compounds so it is inorganic material and basically all the waste falls to the bottom and then falls in between the cracks now a lot of people will go in because they think it's unsightly and they will gravel vacuum their aquarium thinking they're cleaning it. So they'll go in, they'll gravel vac it, they'll pull up any bits of debris or any little uh, bits of broken plant material and so forth and any little curly cues of fish poop or snail poop. Well when you do that it never breaks down and establishes a layer of what we call mulm. L -U L M mulm uh, M U L M one more time uh, and that is basically what we see uh, made up of natural uh, properties that are in the fish poop that are in the plants and it's gonna cause if you look when you spray it with water it's going to kick up and it can be unsightly a lot of people don't like the looks of that you can see the little bits of fish poo well the secret with this is that it is only really harmful for the first few weeks or maybe month and everything that's in there long term that you allow to sit and settle is actually going to turn into something that's helpful it's going to be nutrients that then your plants will eat but all of this that we've been talking about depends on something that we've been staring dead in the face and overlooking and that is there are only a couple ways to get nitrates out of the water in the first place that's to do a water change which basically you can fill your tank with as many fish as you want regardless of plants if you're willing to do water changes several times a day or every few days it just depends on how you've stocked your tank However, if you've got a low stock tank or a tank, you know, less than an inch per gallon or whatnot, I have videos also on how much you should be able to stock a tank with plants as well. And really, you can fit quite a few more fish than many people expect oftentimes. But that's a whole different video. But so you have your tank and it's full of critters and you need to change the water. Well, the more critters you have, the more you need to change the water. The more plants you have, the less often you need to change the water. But what's been staring us in the face is the only thing other than water changes that's going to get those nitrates out is going to be your plants. And how do plants get nitrates out? Well, they eat it and they grow. And plants are either growing or they're dying and doing nothing. So plants always need to be growing. And the things they need to grow are sunlight carbon, nitrogen, uh, and uh, you know that means ammonia or nitrates, it's, it's a mix of things, and nutrients. So one thing that people can do with gravel substrate, if they don't have a soil st substrate that already has nutrients and minerals in it, like a fluval stratum or eco-complete, that sort of thing, if they would rather have gravel and set it up that way, what they can do is they can buy root tabs and those have the micro minerals that your plants need now I still haven't touched on the biggest problem that we're facing here and that is that you may not have the right plants for your problem so every tank needs to have plants enough to break down the waste so here we have lots of teeny fish and it's not really a problem now up in other tanks that I keep we have bigger fish and if we take a look at these bigger fish in the bigger tanks you can see that I have different plant setups but here is a sandy setup 
So yet again, no aqua soil. I'm, I'm operating under the assumption that the people who are contacting me generally aren't using aqua soil because the major issue that I find in many of these tanks, it's not algae that actually eats ammonia, nitrites, and nitrates. It's not, it's not that they have, uh, you know, any other issue with uh, not enough chemicals or not enough nutrients in the water column even. What it is, is that they don't have fast growing plants. In fact, they usually do have plenty of nitrates and nutrients in the water column. You can see here on sand, fish poo and also leftover food is is kind of unsightly. It can look bad and over time it leads to organic particulate and that ends up building up algae oftentimes. And how is algae going to grow? Well, you need those organic pieces of material in the tank, but you also need enough light that it grows and that the plants are not using all that material for their own growth. So I have lots of videos on algae as well, and algae can grow in low light situations, but if you are keeping fish and having this problem we're talking about, the biggest thing that you're probably thinking is, well, that light looks pretty bright, it's not quite like my light, there's a lot of fish in that tank, I mean, how's it working? Well, one, I have an oversized filter. So the filter has been overclocked in the sense that I bought the filter, took out the guts of it, and I put in more bio balls uh, and surface area for the good bacteria to turn the ammonia and basically everything that that comes off and that dissolves out of the waste uh, in the bottom of the tank and then floats in the water as nitrates and nitrites it gets processed by the bacteria that lives up here now ammonia usually doesn't last too long it gets turned into nitrites if you remember the fish cycle and then the nitrates by the next step of bacteria. Now, the problem though is that oftentimes people have plants that are mosses, maybe some algae, maybe some ferns, some crypts, and they're all really slow growing plants. Likewise, the other plant I see in their tanks frequently are these beautiful but slow growing. Um, lilies and they grow from a bulb where their energy is stored as starch and protein and carbohydrates basically uh, in its bulb now they do have roots and they do feed from the substrate but they are going to not necessarily suck up the nutrients from the water and so likewise here's another sandy tank and here's another tank where we see we've got plants like java fern and maybe some wispy grasses, some sawasser tang, some mosses, things like that. That's not going to be enough to process the things in your tank without having to do a lot of water changes. So what can we do about that? Well, one, we can get a light that's semi-decent. This is a Heiger uh, fi, uh, 957 light. And... I like it. I did a review on it. Um, I think it's a good middle of the road, uh, decent price light, around 50 bucks for uh, you know a 20 or 30 gallon tank. And you know if you can, if you can afford that, great. If you can afford even better, a Fluval 3.0 is even better. That's my favorite light in the hobby at the moment. You can program it and do all sorts of things, but it puts out enough energy that these plants can then turn that light and the nutrients in the water that that fish poop has made that is causing you those issues, it can turn that into growth. And so the plants that you're missing usually in these tanks are fast growing plants. So you need floating plants in these tanks. You need, as much as a lot of people hate it oftentimes, duckweed can be very helpful. Now you gotta be careful with duckweed because if you don't have a strong light like one of these Fluval 3.0 Planted Plus or you know a Heiger or a Beams work, I mean, I'm not, I'm not necessarily saying it needs to be any one brand, but you need to look at the specifications and make sure that it's gonna be good enough to penetrate uh, whatever floating plants you may have. 
Otherwise, you're essentially only getting the ammonia and nitrate nitrite removal from that top layer from those plants that are floating and you want to get that from every surface as much as possible you can get it from the algae growing on hardscape and on rocks and on wood and on the side of your glass you can get it um, from plants that are in the substrate but if they have bulbs or if they grow from a rhizome just like this one down here they use up much, much, much less of that ammonia, the nitrites, the nitrates that are in the water and it builds up over time. These are generally considered slow growing plants. So are pretty much all cryptocurrents and they do not process that stuff fast enough for us. So what I highly recommend and what would probably solve a lot of your problems is either you need to reduce the number of fish you have reduce the amount of food you're feeding them, or a little bit of that, a little bit of each of those, and adding more plants that are things like guppy grass. This is a great one. I literally don't need to do a water change. I can go a month without a water change, no problem. I can just top off what's evaporated. And then what I can do is I can just pay, take about three or four handfuls of this and throw it away because that ammonia, those nitrates and that nitrate, it is in this. Now remember, for it to be in those plants that are fast growers, generally you're gonna be looking at the stem plants, the floating plants, the top of the water floating plants, things like hornwort, uh, things like kabamba, water lettuce, um, red root floaters, things like that. And oftentimes a light like this one here that comes with a kit like an aquion or a, a top fin, oftentimes they honestly don't sell you a, a light that is bright enough to encourage the proper growth in those plants. And you end up with lots of algae. And in this tank, I want that. I have gobies and I have other fish that I want that. So let's look at another tank. You end up with lots of those other problems. But if you can pack your tank, even with these cheap plants like hornwort here and uh, rotalas here, uh, kabamba and sawasertang, which is slow growing, but if you have enough of it like this where the whole tank's filled with it, it will process that stuff for you. But when you have things like sword plants and crypts and you know, java ferns and bulbitis, they just can't keep up with it. And then on top of that, when you're gravel vacuuming, trying to make your aquarium clean, you're actually getting rid of all those little surface area spaces and the nutrients that any of the plants that are stem plants that you do have are gonna utilize. So it makes for kind of a double whammy of a problem. Now here we have a pretty low uh, intention or uh, intensity light and aquion light and you can see that it grows a lot of duckweed some red root floaters and some water lettuce but if we can get some plants growing out of the tank and above the tank above the water line then we will be able to actually get rid of far 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 more of the actual problematic chemicals and compounds that are in the aquarium because it's able to use CO2 just like when you inject CO2 in the water in a high-tech tank it's able to use that plus there's no water column to disturb the light so the other thing you could do is put in you know pothos or some sort of type of plant that you can put the roots in the water and the plant itself can come up out of it otherwise if you're if you're dead set on using a low light tank and plants you really need to plant like this tank down here and have a diversity of plants you need to have stem plants of all sorts and ideally you know this will support a whole bunch of different critters but you can see these are also growing up out of the water these red root floaters and this is how I'm able to only run one small filter over here and run with zero nitrates day after day, week after week. In fact, they'll never build up in many of my tanks. 
Now there's other tanks where I keep bigger fish and I have less plants because, you know, for instance, we have cichlids and things like that and more stones and algae and it's just a different environment. This tank, I have to change the water on all the time. And likewise, this tank up here that I've shown you a few times, it's in between. I need to change the water quite a bit in here. And I choose to clean up all the poop and extra food that does build up with just a little turkey baster. Uh, it's, it's what I fin find to be the most effective and uh, useful little tool. And I'll just go in like this and pick it up, get rid of it, you know, just whatever's unsightly and in a decent size amount. And that's that, it's gone. Um, and it is never gonna build up and help the plants, but in this tank, I have hardly any plants that are growing out of the substrate. Now, just to end this video on a note to show you a quote unquote heavily planted tank so you can get an idea of how far uh, you can take this. So this is a pretty heavily planted tank with low light plants that have just kind of run amok. I've got a couple bettas in here that are wild, like this little betta rubra and her uh, her little boyfriend that's in here, as well as some uh, epistogrammas and a few little loaches and gobies. But in the other room, I have a tank that's chock full of fish. It's got a decent size hang on the back filter, but that doesn't matter. I mean, you can have a cartridge filter or whatnot. It's all just about surface area at the end of the day. So you just need to make sure you've got enough surface area for that good bacteria to be transforming the ammonia into nitrites and nitrates. Here's another one that's right on the edge. If it weren't just baby fish in here, I would need more than this aponogeton and a little bit of sawasertang and some guppy grass or naja grass or elodia as it is in this tank to support the fish in these tanks. So let's take a look at a super planted tank and that'll wrap it up. I hope this is helpful, but if you have any further questions, please, please feel free to comment down below, drop me a line, or ask me more later. Now, this is what I would consider a heavily planted tank and a heavily stocked tank. We've got a ton of fish in here. I do have to do some water changes because there are a lot of fish in here, including big old plecos and things, and this is about 50 gallons. But we also have a very powerful light. So we have a powerful light, we have floating plants, we have quick-growing plants like hornwort, we have other quick-growing plants like cabamba, ludwigia, um, bacopa, and uh, all of the rotalas and mayaca, as well as more ludwigia and hygrophila, and that allows us to simply cut the plants and toss them and there goes the nitrates. Now, if you are just in love with plants like Anubius, um, like Bucephalandra, or um, ferns like Bulbitis or Java fern, or mosses for that matter, that's okay but you need to figure out in your system where you're gonna take care of it. Are you going to take care of it by removing water in water changes and putting fresh water in? Are you gonna add a bigger filter with more filter media? Or are you gonna cut back on your fish load? Um, or for that matter, are you gonna up your lighting, up your, your uh, micro minerals and metals and fertilizers and let your plants uh, flourish. So to me, this is a peak per performance tank and kind of on the high end of all those things cranked up. So just wanted to give you guys uh, a look at that and uh, kind of go over everything. Thanks for watching. I'll talk to you next time. If you got something good out of this, please hit that like button, subscribe for more content, and I'll talk to you guys later. Take it easy. Bye.